what up, Josh Rubin from East West Sanding Performance. Today I want to talk to you about vitamin D. Now, you know there's a lot of people out there, there's a lot of doctors, everyone that has a problem, I've talked about this before in many of my YouTube clips, they're always recommending vitamin D. And the problem is we have to always understand why we're putting things in our body, what we're putting in our body, and where are they coming from. So the first thing is we have to understand there's many different types of vitamin D. You have vitamin D2, which is ergol calciferol, which is more the plant source. You have vitamin D3, which is cholecalciferol. That's more of the vitamin D that actually comes from the animal source. So the first thing is if you're taking vitamin D, you want to make sure you understand what source it's coming from. We recommend the animal source, the D3, more than anything. Now I'm going to talk about why vitamin D is important. The question is, should I take vitamin D? And if I'm going to take vitamin D, where can I get it from? Because a lot of people are taking supplements, and they're taking supplements when they have a damaged metabolism. And if you have a damaged metabolism, you can't break down foods. Many of the supplements that you're actually taking, you can't break down. They can cause more GI issues. They can cause more burden on the liver, which can cause more elevated circulating levels of estrogen and serotonin. All these things can downregulate the thyroid and actually perpetuate the issue. Then at the same time, most of the supplements people are taking are actually filled with a lot of junk. They're produced in different countries or the, I should say, the ingredients in the supplements are produced in, produced in different countries because it's cheaper. The regulations are actually uh, a lot less strict. And less than 20% of the stuff that's sent over is regulated by the FDA, so you really don't know what you're getting. So the first thing is you want to make sure that you can get it from food or, of course, get it from the sun. Now, I've talked about before, we have to think about where do we get vitamin D? And, of course, we can get it from the sun. But we have to think about, in the body, what actually affects the absorption of it. Now, of course, people with hydrochloric acid deficiencies, uh, people that have gastritis or H. pylori in the stomach, people that are eating raw foods and not breaking them down, people that are eating protein-deficient diets, anything that's going on in the stomach, or people that have a down-regulated metabolism or thyroid from uh, liver burden, from excess estrogen, or inability to detoxify it. Things like cortisol, estrogen, serotonin, all these things inhibiting thyroid production in the liver, which downregulates metabolism, which is going to downrate hydrochloric acid production, leading to a vitamin D deficiency. Now, at the same time, because calcium is always regulated with vitamin D, and we actually, we actually absorb calcium in the stomach, and we need hydrochloric acid to do that. Now, at the same time, we need bile to actually absorb vitamin D. And if you have a biliary insufficiency or biliary stasis from typically not eating the right types of fat, you know, having a fat-deficient diet. But at the same time, people that are estrogen-dominant from the inability to detox of it, over-synthesizing progesterone or having a progesterone deficiency, using birth control pill or topical creams, things like that, and blood sugar dysregulation, the liver's overburdened. What happens is now we can't detoxify estrogen. And the liver needs proteins and certain B vitamins to actually detoxify estrogen and serotonin in the liver. So when estrogen levels accumulate in the body or they're unopposed by progesterone, they actually decrease blood volume. We'll simplify it. They pull water from the blood, push it into the tissues, create that puffiness and edema. They pull albumin from the blood. But at the same time, they lower blood volume. And when they do that, it can actually cause a thickening of the bile and call it bil cause a biliary stasis. That's why Dr. John Lee, when he was alive, when he practiced, if you read a lot of his books, he actually saw that most women that were getting their gallbladder removed actually were estrogen dominant. And remember, there's four types of estrogen dominant, so research that. So it could be something going in the bile, it could be more hormonal related, that's why you're vitamin D deficient, because you need bile to absorb the hormone, I'm mean, sorry, the vitamin. Vitamin A, D, T, A, D, E, and K are fat-soluble vitamins. We get them from our foods, we absorb them. So the question is, if I need it, is it actually my system that's not absorbing it? So we have to think about these things. And like I've talked about, it could be because you're not getting outside enough and so forth. But let's look at what, why we need vitamin D. Why is it so important? Well, it's a major antioxidant in the body, of course. It actually helps the body absorb calcium in the small intestine. So we break it down in the stomach. We absorb most of our nutrients in the small intestine. And we know how important calcium is because calcium is actually anti-inflammatory. And this is the calcium we're getting from our foods, not the crappy supplements that most people are taking. Because calcium allows your cells to release calcium, so it reduces the excitability of the cells, and it can actually cause relaxation of the muscles, the cells, relaxation of the cells in the, in the small intestine and the large intestine, um, but also downregulate parathyroid hormone, which can downregulate prolactin, which is highly inflammatory, and that can lead to hair loss, that can lead to sleep issues, and so forth. Um, 
The vitamin D actually maintains blood levels of calcium and phosphorus, which is really important for uh, balancing out things in the body like L-tryptophan. It actually stimulates the development of white blood cells, and a lot of people that have acute infections, viral issues, bacterial issues, you'll typically see low white blood count. So vitamin D can actually help regulate that. It actually plays a minor role in insulin secretion. And what we find is a lot of people, when they change their diet, or they start working with us a lot of the times, and they maybe go too fast, or they're adding in too many of the, let's say, root vegetables that are high in glucose, or they go too fast with the fruits, they end up hyperglycemic. So vitamin D in this instant can help the body kind of relearn how to regulate blood sugar. Actually help the pancreas to start releasing insulin again to regulate blood sugar. Now I'm not saying that's the one thing that's going to help it. I'm not saying in general if you just take vitamin D you're good. Of course there's way more penny, many pieces to the puzzle. But it just plays a minor role in insulin secretion and helping the body to regulate hyperglycemia over time. Uh, vitamin D and as well as vitamin K2 are actually anti-estrogenic. And vitamin D and calcium actually decrease inflammation and downregulate parathyroid hormone. And calcium is important with vitamin D because they actually help to regulate calcium I'm um, sorry, vitamin D and vitamin K are actually important because they regulate calcium absorption in the body. They kind of tell the body where to put the calcium. Do I put it in the tissues? Do I put it in the arteries and cause arterial issues and fibrosis and heart disease? Or do I put it in bone where it actually needs to go? So they're kind of the conductors when we get them from our foods. Things like, according to Ray P, high, a diet that's high in the right types of sugars, that's high in the right types of calcium, that's high in um, uh, milk and orange juice can actually regulate uh, vitamin D dependency. So we find so many people taking vitamin D for so long. And the thing is, you shouldn't have to take it for a long time if you're actually eating the right foods, carbohydrates, proteins, fats, you're getting the right type of dairy, you're getting the right amounts of orange juice, you're getting the right amounts of sugars, you're getting the right amount of calcium in your foods, you can actually downregulate the amount of time you actually need to take it, the vitamin D. Now I'm not going to go what we recommend because, of course, it's different for everyone. Some people need so much every day depending on where they live. Some people need it maybe twice a week. Now typically it's something we only, well, I don't want to say only recommend, but we recommend it typically in the winter months. Same thing with the light therapy. You can watch our light therapy video on the YouTube page. It's called Amp Up Your Life. We talk about how you can actually increase vitamin D levels by downregulating melatonin, and serotonin, and prolactin from using a light lamp every day when it's dark for about 30 minutes or so. But the bottom line is this. If you don't want to take a supplement, I should say if you do want to take a supplement, we highly recommend more of a topical clean supplement that you can put on your skin that you're not putting in your mouth. That's the most important thing. Secondly, if you want to get vitamin D in your diet, the best place to do it is increase the amount of dairy you're taking in, especially butter. Increase the amount of organic, you know, pasture-raised, you know, eggs that you can take in per day. You can increase the amount of liver. We recommend typically three, maybe three to six ounces every seven to ten days, depending on the person. That can give you right amounts of vitamin D. You can use white fish like cod and sole. You can use different types of shrimp. You can use goat milk or, of course, direct sunlight every single day, midday between 12 and 2. Now, if you want to get more vitamin D, we highly recommend you use the foods first. Look at your physiology. Eat the right foods to regulate metabolism. And then, if needed, use the topical or if you feel... Because your definition of health is you need a supplement, you can go for it. But hopefully you enjoyed this YouTube clip. I'm out of here.